you've come out with a new unearthed arcana. This is very unique and changes a lot about the game. So tell me how this came about. What is this new unearthed arcana? A few years ago, I publicly brought up that we were going to start exploring the possibility of introducing variant class features for the classes in the player's handbook. At the time, there was a lot of interest in that, also curiosity, what might that look like? Well, this most recent Unearthed Arcana is exactly that. That is that thing I brought up several years ago that we were going to explore, and now we finally have been able to reveal uh, the fruit of that exploration. Technically, these variants don't change anything about the game because first off, like all Unearthed Arcana material, it's playtest, it's not officially part of the game, but even if we were to make these a part of the game, let's say everyone loves them and we decide to take them to the next step, like the options we introduced in our other books, there are subclasses in Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica, there are are options in Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide. There are options in Xanathar's Guide to Everything, Races in Volo's Guide, in Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes. All of those things are optional, and that fact of being optional is true about these variants as well. We state right up front, a DM decides if these variants are going to be used in a particular campaign, and a DM might decide to say yes to some of the variants and no to others. This is a tool that we would love to see groups having the option of implementing in their games and deciding how much of this tool they want to use. This is really meant to be, in a way, a buffet for people to come to and look and see, is there something here that's going to help enhance their enjoyment of the classes that they've been playing potentially for the last five years. Mm -hmm. And so really at the heart of it, this is all about, hey, you like th this thing? Here's a way for you to see a new side to it. Here's a way to maybe smooth away a piece of this thing that you liked, smooth away a piece of it that was maybe a pain point for you. And so a lot of our work when coming up with these class features and uh, this work was done by Dan Dillon, Ben Petrosor, and myself, then getting some editorial support from Wes Schneider. Our goal was, where are their pain points? How can we address those? And then also, where are there some chances for just some fun new spice? Yeah. Where, where is there a feature in a class that maybe is really just there for flavor. It's not a load-bearing element of a class where we could provide an alternative or an enhancement that would give people a new experience. And so I also now just touched on another important aspect of this Unearthed Arcana. That is, some of these variants replace features and some of them enhance. When we first started this project, all of the, the variants were going to be about replacement. But we realized that our classes actually have very few features that we would want to replace. Now, that, that's more true for some classes and less true for others. The Ranger, because of feedback we've received over the years, we knew had a number of features where people would love to see some alternatives. Right. So that's why when you look at this article, you'll see there are a lot of replacement options. But we have other classes where the core of the class the rogue is a fine example of this, is solid. Yeah. And each of the pieces of the core class has an important purpose in how that class functions, not only mechanically, but also narratively. And so as we did this exploration, we realized for some classes, we don't have any replacements necessarily that we want to offer, right. but we do have some enhancements we want to make available to people. Now an enhancement basically snaps into a feature you already have and gives it a twist. Right. It, and it's important as, when a person is reading these enhancements and replacements to realize that unless the enhancement explicitly turns something off in the feature it's enhancing, yeah. 
the feature it's enhancing continues to work exactly the way it's written in the player's handbook, but again, now with a little extra. Hence, enhancement. Exactly. <laughs> it's taking something that exists yes. and making it better. Exactly. Yeah. You know, if it's better for you. And, <laughs> you and don't have to do it. You don't have to do it. Uh, and again, it is each group's choice right. whether they want to engage with these or not. Now, some people might think, well, if these things enhance, why wouldn't every group do it? And here's why. There are some groups that love the simplicity of, we just play with what's in the player's handbook, which is one of the reasons why we're not going to take these and suddenly say, everyone must apply them to their game. Right. Uh, because a big part of our game is people getting to sort of calibrate it to their group's taste. And so these enhancements and these replacements, again, it's a buffet, and the group can decide how many of these things they would like to engage with. Many of these things, especially when it comes to the enhancements, are also ultimately about providing greater versatility. If you look at the UA, the word versatility, in fact, shows up over and over again. Quite often. Uh, and, <laughs> and one of the reasons for that is I wanted us to provide an official answer to the desire in many groups, which we have observed over the last five years, to be able to have a bit more flexibility with their character. For when they make a choice, not be trapped by that choice. Right. Uh, because we have provided in the player's handbook various ways to say if you're a sorcerer, when you level up, swap out a spell. Yes, that but, is remarkable, but, by the way. But, well, but that's, in, that's in the player's handbook. Yeah. In this, we provide you the ability to swap out a spell at the end of the long rest. Yeah. The reason for that is we actually have no control over, as game designers, over how long a level lasts. And in some groups, it has become clear as we've observed different patterns of play over the last five years, oh, yeah. having to wait till that next level to yeah. swap out a spell you decide you don't like. In one group, that might just be a session or two from now. Right. Another group, if another group likes to sort of just stay the same level for a long time, that could be six to 12 months, yes. which was not a part of our original design. <laughs> and so in a way, us providing this versatility is, t is signaling to people right. the game can handle a sorcerer, for instance, swapping out one spell at the end of a, a short rest. I mean, I'm sorry, a long rest. Yeah. Uh, because also, ultimately, we want people to be happy with their characters. There, to me, there is no merit in the design to sort of make people eat their vegetables uh, with, you know, with their character. It's, yeah, this it's is a an game. It's a game. <laughs> now, someone might then ask, Jeremy, why don't you just let people change everything all the time? Now, the reason why the rules Identity don't do that... Identity is an it, important thing. <laughs> exactly. The reason why the rules don't do that uh, it's really twofold. Uh, one, it's a narrative reason. We want there to be at least some stable identity to a person's character. Mm -hmm. But also, B, we don't want this potential slowdown of reconsidering everything in your character all the time. Uh, now, there are a few characters where, like the wizard, for instance, where actually a deep consideration daily of their spells and all of their spells is a core part of their identity. But with wizards, we address that by, it's a spell book, so the spell book doesn't have every single wizard spell in existence. It's sort of a curated list, and then right. you're choosing from that curated list. And that's kind of the charm of being a wizard. Yes, yeah. I mean, that is, that is a big part of their identity. And they still have that identity. Even now, let's say a group decides to use some of these versatility options in uh, the sorcerer, the bard, uh, the, the ranger. They get to swap out one spell every day. Yeah. The cleric, the druid, and the wizard still get to, if they want to, prepare an entirely different list of spells every day. Right. So their identity, their versatility, yeah is still unmatched uh, in the game. 
I'm saying this because sometimes there's anxiety among players yes. about one class encroaching upon another class's identity. I'm bringing this up to let people know the identity is intact. Not because, even close. <laughs> yeah, one, one spell versus an entire list yes. is a very different play experience uh, because you're still also going to see stability. This also, some of these enhancements, uh, let us bring not only that versatility that, that I'm mentioning, but also address indirectly pain points in, in some subclasses. Here's a great example of this. In the monk, some people might be a little puzzled by the key fueled strike enhancement. Right. Because they, they'll realize, wait a second, this, this enhancement allows a monk, if, if in the campaign this enhancement is basically turned on, to use their bonus action to make an unarmed strike if they used their, their action and in, as a part of that action they spent key. And people will think, well, the monk can already make unarmed strikes as a bonus action. What this is doing is this is making it so that subclasses like the Way of Shadow and the Way of the Four Elements, which have certain features that consume their entire action, spending key and often, often casting a spell, this feature now allows subclasses like that to still get their unarmed strike in. Addressing a piece of feedback we've gotten about those subclasses sometimes feeling like they're falling behind. Uh, and so this was also a chance for us to do some fun rules options that in many cases uh, kill sort of multiple birds with one stone.